There is a dimension beyond which is known to humankind. A dimension of sound and sight of mind. A dimension intended only for mature audiences. And exists solely as a form of entertainment. Without intentions of education or societal enrichment. It's, it's, a, it's a podcast. It, it's what you're listening to right now. It's a podcast. It's a podcast we call Lore Folk. Welcome back to Lore Folk, a podcast where we riff on all things paranormal. I'm your host, Aiden Kidd. And it's me, Maddie. I'm also here. Yay. All you need is love. Love is all you need. Uh, end of the song. Don't copyright strike this. It's it's a, almost Valentine's Day. Do you have anything else romantic to say, Aiden? No. Yeah, just kidding. We have some Valentine's Day things to talk about. See, the number one problem plaguing the cryptid community today is a lack of population. Mm-hmm. And it's because those freaks aren't fornicating. So we're here with some romance advice on how to score yourself a sweet honey, be ye moth or be ye man. So Maddie, to start off, what do you look for in a partner? Someone nice, someone funny... Someone scaly who can breathe underwater. This is a bit. I'm not a monster fucker. (laughs) What do you look for in a partner? If you can't wrap the Bart man perfectly off the top of your head, we're going nowhere, honey. (laughs) I got nothing to say in response. Sorry, long line of the most gorgeous people to exist who are constantly vying for my affection, but if you want to sit on this face, you gotta get down with the Bart. Why Bart? Because home is where the Bart is, and I need to feel like I have a home with you. Just take a deep breath, bro. It's okay. They're out there somewhere. <laughs> I love the image of being in a healthy, loving, Bart-based relationship for many years, and then one day my partner gets down on one knee and is like, Will you do me the honor? Of marrying me? And I'm just like, no. What? Why? I did the Bartman for you, my love. I did everything. How could you say no? You didn't do the dialogue at the beginning. You went right into the rap. I knew then that this wouldn't last forever. And I put on my trench coat and hat and I'm like, I'm out of here. Toots. (laughs) Damn. I guess what I'm trying to say is that the key to finding a healthy relationship is to have standards and to never settle and to make sure you know all the dialogue and lyrics to 1991's The Bartman. Aiden, I have a question for us. Say that question with your orifices. A delicious Valentine's themed question. Somebody Casey on Yahoo Answers wants to know. When is the right time to tell someone you were passionate lover is in an alternate timeline in the afterlife, but he doesn't remember because technically none of that happened in this strand of the multiverse? Question mark. Oh, God. Aiden, <laughs> when's the right time? First date? After marriage? Deathbed? There's plenty of options. Oh, God. <laughs> Say it again. Say it again. When... Is the right time to tell someone you were passionate lover is in an alternate timeline in the afterlife. But he doesn't remember, because technically none of that happened in this strand of the multiverse. The fact that they specify passionate lovers <laughs> is like, not just like we knew each gets other. Me. It's like it's not like, hey, we were married in a past life. It's like we were passionate lovers. We were passionate lovers. Every time I saw you, you would do me so hard. <laughs> Like, and like, and also, what if you're strangers in this dimension? You like, you're, if you're what are your uh, fucking? What if you're a barista and and one of your customers is like, hey, I, I'm a regular. I've been coming here for a while, but I just wanted to let you know that uh, in a different strand of the multiverse, you know, one of those strands, uh, we were passionate lovers, and we did it on the daily. So. But that might work on me if I was that barista, because I'd think it was funny. I wouldn't take them seriously. <laughs> but like as a pickup, it would work. How are you going to prove it? Yeah, because it's funny. It's like, oh, this is like a goofy shit. Like, fucking, oh no. Mm. 
You could prove it the way you could prove it. I'm thinking um, in, in Scott Pilgrim when he touches the back of her knee, right? Something like that. Where you know things about them. You know where oh. there's like a secret intimate freckle or something gross like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there's that secret ingrown hair on their leg that'll fucking trigger their goddamn flashbacks. <laughs> you could astral. You'd have to like astral project with them. Like what you do is you don't tell them. But you astral project with them, like you do like the seance or whoever, whatever gets you two in the mood. And you'll astral project and eventually like those visions will come to you in the astral plane. So you let them figure it out. Here, you turn it on them. You let them figure it out. And then they have to tell you. They have to figure out the right time to tell you. And then you'll both tell each other at the same time. And it'll be really cute. Like when people both plan to propose on the same date love when that happens yeah you'll both just know you won't ever need to actually tell them because they'll see it for themselves and they'll understand Mm. because if you fucking tell anybody that shit they're gonna think you're either crazy or joking i also feel like you could wait till marriage they're already locked in there what are they gonna do leave now getting a divorce lawyer is a huge hassle we just merged all our assets you fool it'd be really spicy if you were like enemies or, like, fighting business rivals. Or fighting lawyers, a la Ace Attorney. You're just sexy rivals. Fuck, I love Ace Attorney. <laughs> You're just sexy <laughs> hot rivals. And you loved each other at some point, but now you don't. All right, Maddie, I have a Yahoo Answers question here from Yahoo Answer. She's a woman. She asks, 10 Sasquatches versus King Kong. Who will win? Is that, is that it? That's the whole question. Ten Sasquatches, who, as we all know, are uh, larger than the average bear, but <laughs> still not as big as King Kong. That's who true. Is, you know, it depends on the King Kong. It depends on the adaption. Because that new King Kong and that new poster for the Godzilla thing, he's a big boy. I don't think ten Sasquatches could take him. But, like, classic King Kong... Or even just like the fucking Peter Jackson King Kong, I think 10 Sasquatches with the tactical advantage and the ability to coordinate amongst a group could totally bring him down. That's what I was going to say. I don't think it matters. We know that King Kong is bigger than Sasquatch no matter what, right? That's just a given. Mm -hmm. But I think that a bunch of Sasquatches could take him. Because that's what we all, that's what you always see in the movies. You know, that's what you see when they're fighting the, the Ghostbusters marshmallow guy. It's a bunch of little guys, and they're all fighting one big guy. It's a David and Goliath story. All the Sasquatches have to do is, you know, string a, a wire between his feet and he'll trip, and then they'll start kicking him, or whatever the fuck you do to King Kong. Also, it's entirely possible that uh, if we have 10 Bigfoots and they're well coordinated, they might just be like a Power Rangers type like robot force who have like the ability to summon mechs and they might be able to handle this situation in an entirely different way that's true they could all combine together and and fight god that would be so fucking cool yeah even you know if how... they can't summon robots they could stack on top of each other and make just like a big big foot that's what i'm thinking bigger foot biggest foot <laughs> i also feel like king kong is there he's cool whatever uh, no one's really, no one's hunting for King Kong, right? We just assume he's out there on an island, but people want to know if Sasquatch is there or not, right? People are invested in the Sasquatch story. So I feel like if you had 10, all of a sudden, every single person who ever said that Sasquatch was real and nobody believed them would be like emboldened and they'd be like, fuck yeah, like this is my time. Sasquatch is real and there's 10 of him. Let's fucking go. And the Sasquatches could create like a human Sasquatch army. Of all of the cryptid believers to take down King Kong. Kong. They could also, with that belief, do like a Goku-style spirit bomb with their energy. They could. You could also just get one really sexy Sasquatch to sort of distract him like the lady usually does in the movie. Right. And, and then you're done. What about ten Donkey Kongs versus one King Kong? I feel like King Kong could win. Kong versus Why? Kong. Why? Bigfoot is just a, a stronger Bigfoot. Bigfoot's just a stronger Bigfoot. I mean, I mean, Donkey Kong is a stronger King Kong. I mm. mean, he's a stronger Bigfoot. <laughs> Aiden's having a stroke. Oh, God. Who, who would win? One conceptual fight or Aiden's brain? Boy, howdy. 
We're podcasting now. <laughs> I think King Kong would win because he know he's on the inner minds, the inner workings of a regular Donkey Kong. He understands those, but he's bigger. It's like if you fought your clone, you'd always be so evenly matched that nobody would win. Except this time your clone is super huge and can just step on you. He's still mad about fucking John Kirby defending Nintendo all those years ago and getting away with the King Kong Donkey Kong situation. He's mad about that litigation, so he's going to stomp the shit out of that fucking cartoon ape. get here that's crazy before that though let me tell you about our patreon Ooh, we have a patreon now it's the only way to support us it's super cool and fun if you join us you will get access to let's play episodes and music and animations early you'll get everything early anything we do anytime it's done it goes right up on patreon so you get everything like a week before everybody else or more super cool easy way to support us make sure we can keep doing the show we'll appreciate you forever uh, Aiden, give us an ad. Coming this fall, it's Angela's in the outfield. That's right. It, it's Angels in the outfield, but with a German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. Isn't that exciting? You'll see it. It's for the kids. You know, they'll like it, probably. Lorefolk is happy to support Amphibijuice. A magical elixir that will turn anyone who consumes it into the amphibian of their choice. Finally, you and your loved ones can enjoy a sunbeam together on a lily pad. Or maybe you've just always really wanted to be able to lick your own eyes. I know I have. One swig of amphibijuice and all your swamp dreams will come true. Amphibijuice. Unleash the frog within. And they've also added a, a small disclaimer here. It says, um... Due to recent lawsuits, the creators of Amphibijuice are obligated to clarify that Amphibijuice is a liquid, but uh, we do not condone c cleaning, cooking, or swimming with it. It's intended for a one-time consumption only, and we're no longer reliable for anything that may happen to you or the objects around you if you choose to misuse it willingly or not. Buy Amphibijuice today! Say that question with your face now. You always specify. Like, I couldn't say the question with any other part of my body, Aiden. Try as I may, it's always going to be my mouth saying the fucking, question. Just because you don't have a fucking secondary mouth on your forehead. <laughs> I'm working on it. Fucking do better. Okay. Here, I'll ask. You know what? I'll ask this question with my brain. Fucking, they can't hear that, though. Oh, shit, fuck. There's okay. a reason I specify. Why do wizards never cut their hair or shave their beard? Now, I have a personal theory. I think that every single wizard has a giant eyeball on their chin, sort of like Zelda boss, and they're hiding it underneath a beard. But what do you think, Aiden? That's where the love is stored. <laughs> love is stored in the wizard beard? Love is stored in the wizard beard. Do you get more love if your beard grows longer? Yes, of course. Does that mean new wizards are like really like mad? Oh, they're a bunch of fucking and... edge lords. Hate those guys. <laughs> new wizards, fuck off. You thought your eight year old nephew was an asshole? Fucking get used to fucking eight year old wizards. They're awful. They're the worst. They're so They're mad. all falling into the alt right pipeline via YouTube. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, lo fucking asked and answered. Love is stored in the wizard beard. Can they trim? Can they trim it? No. No. Okay. No, nah, I'm kidding. Of course they can. They could be stylish. Oh, okay, cool. Cause you know why? Why? They gotta be able to love themselves too. Oh, uh, we Wizards fucking are did full it, of love. ladies and gentlemen. We did it. Self care. Aiden figured it out. The secret to self care: grow a fucking wizard beard. If a vampire bites a horse, would that create a horse vampire? So we all know that when a vampire, or a Dracula, bites a person and drains their blood, 
They can then turn them into a vampire by feeding them some of their own vampire blood. Could this also be done with a horse? Would the horse have fangs? Would the vampire horse attack other horses? Or humans? Sorry. (laughs) I thought it was just going to be the initial question and then it just fucking kept going. This is also by an anonymous user. You're walking alone at night. You hear the... And you see in the distance, down the street, a lone horse. What do you do? Well, if I'm a 12-year-old girl with a really long braid, I'll probably try to tame it. But if I'm anybody (laughs) else, I'm fucking running the other direction. And you're the only one who can. I just think this is excellent because horses already have pretty distinct and fun hairstyles, right? Like, weirdly, that's a big part of horses is doing their hair. And and vampires have that fun, distinct little, like, widow's peak hair thing going on. Mm -hmm. And I just think it would be really (laughs) fucking rad if your horse had, like, the fun, slicked triangle in the front front and like maybe a little cape that it wore too i was about to say i do think that vampire horses get jealous of human vampires i was about to say human horses Mm. uh, because they can wear those frilly shirts but like horses can't wear the puffy shirts they can only wear the cape really horses can wear shirts there's horse shirts out there horses can wear all kinds of clothing dude yeah but it's not very accessible that's true the horse can't pay for it it's a vampire oh and vampires mm-hmm. can't enter establishments without being invited in. That's the number one problem facing this horse in purchasing goods and services. I feel like everywhere else that would work in the horse's favor because horses are often, if you're if it's like a trained horse for like fucking, what's, what's horse sports called? There's a word for it. I want you to figure it out. A- equestrian? Is it just equestrian stuff? No, there's a word. There's a word for it. Horse sports. Fucking whatever. I don't care. If you're a horse, if you're a horse sports kind of horse, then you have like a it's girl. It's just like equestrianism. A- okay. Equestrian. Equestrian activities. Okay. G- excellent. I'm a genius. I'm a fucking horse genius. I'm a horse doctor. Horsologist. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> if uh hor- horses have girls there's a 12 year old girl with a long braid and she tells the horse what to do right she tells him when to trot when to jump over little fences she gives him sugar cubes and i think that would work perfectly because you don't often have a horse somewhere you don't want the horse to be right you're always telling the horse what to do so a vampire horse could get invited anywhere that it wants as long as it's a part of the competition you know that's a good point so what you're saying is that the vampire horse basically attaches itself to a host Mm-hmm. To get into places. That's what regular horses do. Do you think... <laughs> wait a minute. Do you think, like, the horse girl industry... <laughs> it was invented by horses. <laughs> this was invented by vampire horses. Yes. So they can infiltrate our strongest members of society. <laughs> <laughs> Earn the trust of the most respected people in the social hierarchy, horse girls. Would it, att- would it get fangs? Horses yes, have scary of teeth already. Yes. Okay. Horse, horse has, fangs. Okay, it's got fangs. It has the fun widow's peak. It's wearing a cape. What's another vampire? Would it be a different color? No. I guess it might get a little paler because vampires are usually pale. I think a lot of the reason we don't hear about the reason we don't hear about vampire horses and the fact that they have to incorporate is the fact that they're often outside creatures, mm. and so they need to they need to engage in creative means to find ways inside to safety a lot of vampire horses die very quickly because they break their leg and then we have to shoot them <laughs> <laughs> oh my god wait a minute what if wait you, a minute oh my god oh my god what if you had a fucking vampire horse and it broke its leg and the fucking horse doctor comes to fucking put it out of its misery and then they shoot the horse and they're like fuck it's not dying <laughs> Oh, God, we, how we do you... Need, we need silver horse bullets. No, that's vampires, Maddie. You need oh, like fuck. a crossbow. You oh, need a crossbow fuck. with a wooden stake, I think. <gasps> yes. To kill them. A to double kill barrel crossbow. <gasps> fuck. And then you get vampire glue. Damn. Vampire glue. <laughs> no. Okay, what were you... You were going to say something also. You had a realization. I don't think I did. Say something funnier than vampire <laughs> <glue>. <laughs> I don't know.
know. I can't decide if a horse would eat a person or another animal. I think horses are always looking for the opportunity to consume human flesh. I think they're always waiting for that. Mm. Have you seen their eyes? They got like shark eyes. They're crazy. Now you've given them fangs. I think they're totally going to eat human beings. Yeah. Girl's going to hold out a little sugar cube in her hand and they usually like get all up in your hand all weird and they lick Mm -hmm. it and you're just going to be like, oops, bit her hand off. What what are you going to do? I'm a vampire horse. (laughs) Can't hold it against me. So human vampire bites horse, turns into a vampire horse. I don't think that's disputable. I think we have like records of that existing. I don't think that's even part of the question. Vampire horse bites a human, turns into a vampire centaur? Oh my god. <laughs> or does it just turn into you minute. just turn into a vampire or You're human? You're onto something. You're onto something here. <laughs> I feel like there's a line. There we can follow the evolutionary line of vampire to horse to centaur. It's pretty pretty straight line right there that I've drawn. This is upsetting news to me. <laughs> Aiden doesn't know how to process my gigantic brain discovery. Maddie's big galaxy brain just fucking blew the lid on all of, like, mythology. That would be so fucking rad, too, because it would be like, you'd have, again, you'd have the classic Widow's Peak, you'd have the fangs, you'd have the fun cape, and then I think also there's always that weird section of the front of the centaur where, like, you know, around the stomach where it turns back into the horse, Mm -hmm. but that fur right there would also be like a fun vampire Widow's Peak. (laughs) You like said that triangle. horses can wear shirts. Do you think that how would a centaur vampire wear that shirt? Would they wear like a people shirt and then a horse shirt and then horse pants? If a centaur, if a vampire centaur wore a shirt, would it wear it like this? <laughs> like this? I think that it would be wearing a cape uh, or a shirt on the human part on the front on the body, and then also like a cape that sort of comes off like sort of the butt part of the horse. Just sort of like a really big cape that sort of floats around back there. All right, that's going to do it for this episode, folks. If you like what you heard, please uh, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel if you're watching it over there. Or leave a nice review on Apple Podcasts or whatever it is you're listening to this on, if it does reviews at all. And if you have something uh, spooky or a question or something that you want us to talk about, a Yahoo Answers question, mayhaps. Every time I look at the Yahoo Answers section, part of me dies, and I would really like it if that we could divvy up that pain amongst <laughs> other human beings. Save Aiden from the pain of knowing about humanity. Take some weight off of this tired soul. Uh, you can send anything like that over to lorefolksubmissions at gmail.com. Just make sure you include your name and pronouns when you do so. Also, make sure to check us out our Patreon. Yeah, support us on Patreon. You get super fun access to Aiden's animation process and video games early and music from the show and all sorts of other fun stuff for super cheap per month. It's like $5. Yay. Now, it also must be known that, of course, the Bartman will make me (laughs) uh, be willing to go into a relationship with you. Uh If you do that YouTube Shrek rap, we're getting married on the spot. And we're going past marriage. We're going straight to like astral projecting into the next quantum realm kind of love. Just like spiraling energies into infinity. If you do the what? The Shrek rap. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Maddie. Have you not heard the Shrek rap? <laughs> no. Fee, fee, fi, fi, fo, fo, fun? Oh, God. Shrek ain't your average ogre, son. I got a donkey who's wonky and I live in the swamp. If you're feeling this ogre, let me hear you stomp. Shrek, Shrek, oh, how'd you get so green? Shrek, Shrek, yo, what's your favorite cuisine? I eat frogs and bugs and ducks. Shout out to our patrons for all the support. We love you. If you'd like to support us as well and see your name here, you can hop over to our Patreon and join us for as little as five bucks a month. 
you'll get access to episodes early, bonus content, and all sorts of other goodies.